name is Virgil Red Cloud Good. I come to you from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, prisoner of War Camp 334. Reservation is a fancy word for concentration camp and where we are to now, today. So I'm sixth generation descent of Red Cloud. Right now in 2021, we still have a lot of houses out there that don't have running water. We still have a lot of houses out there that uh, don't have any plastics on the door, that don't have any glass on the window. And I did say we don't really have economic development. Here we have two stores, some communities don't have any, so they have to travel. Like here we're about 76, 80 miles in a shortcut way to Rapid City, but that's still a long ways. I mean, that's a hundred and some miles just to go after food. We live in extreme poverty and so we don't have nutritious meals every day. Um, we may have, some may, people may have one at least, but not, not every day and people struggle um, with the food. Imagine only 10% of the population have, are employed. I mean, can you just imagine all these other families are, are not having a job? So how are they surviving? But I think a lot of times we, when we go off reservation and we do find employment, we um, encounter racism, whether that's in the job, whether that's in finding housing, um, or being stable in that job. And the perception that they have, and we hear this all the time, that we get government freebies. You know, we're handed these things. What are we handed? We gave up our land for these treaties to be made. So say, for example, like Black Hills, um, they were stolen illegally. Um, look at all the money that they're making off our resources, stolen resources. We're a people that have always evolved through 500 years of oppression, 500 years of the attempt to eliminate us from the very existence of being on the prairie to being where we are today. We are the survivors of the Wounded Knee Massacre. We are the survivors of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. We have always been here and we will continue to be here um, through the generations. How long have you been in this home? Oh, we've been here for like, what, it's been gone two and a half years, like two and a half years. We've got a hole right here as well, going on the outside. So just so I understand, Marnie, do you have running water in the house? Yeah. Oh, okay. There's you plumbing running and running water. water. Um, well, my brother that's in jail, he's, he kind of drank a lot, so he would come over and would have to throw him in jail because I'm, I don't drink. I don't use drugs or nothing. I kind of just am here for the kids. And I love it because like our kids, I don't know, they bring their friends and their friends come to stay. Like some of them come from broken homes too around here. So sometimes on weekends I have, like I told you, I have like 20, 21, 22 kids here. So I said, some of my friends all laughed. They call me Mother Hubbard. I said, always oh, taking in more kids. It's hard living down here. All the suicides, all the people that you see go through the funeral home. And then now, now I lost my brother. But with the, him passing away, I, I knew he was depressed. I don't want to say he had an addiction. Maybe he did. Maybe it was just to numb the pain. You know, it's hard. You know, you have all these young kids killing themselves. 
My name is Yvonne DeCorey. I and my colleague Eileen Janice work together in suicide prevention. I also assist at a burger joint called Out of Bounds in Pine Ridge, where many of our youth who work there are at risk. My Lakota name is One Who Saves Lives, and I've never connected it. And the spiritual leader said, you know, you have no fear, and you're out there to save young people. You're out there to save lives, to save families. What was your life like before you come to work for us? Have some had so much free time, you know, like, I didn't know what to do with it, so it made me sad. But after working here, my mental health started getting a lot better, and, um, we started going the right way, like the right path in life. How many times have we sent you to institutions for your self-harm? Three. Three times? My last time I was sent off, I, it was January 23rd, so a last few months year. ago. A few oh, months no, ago. Yeah, just January. Yeah. But, but yeah. You're, you're doing better now? Yeah. We have good days? Yeah, we're we having have better days. days. March of 2020, the ideations and the attempts just soared. Um, I could sometimes I could take seven calls a night. Eileen could take the same amount. And some of our crisis response workers take calls too. So it's not just Eileen and I. There's no magic words. There's nothing magical that we can do to take it all away. And we it's something we all need to go through. And it's hard. We cry with them. We go through it with them. He is alive, but he's on meth. You have to remember he has an addiction. It's not him. But it's dangerous to put him, to put him in your home because you'll be in harm's way again. Well, we're gonna look for him and we'll get back to you, okay? So just, and keep Eileen and I in your prayers, because we need prayers. Okay, we'll see you. There's just a level of poverty here that a lot of people don't understand. Um, you you watch things on TV and. You know, you and I see that those things, and that's normal. Whereas there's a lot of young people down here that that's a dream. Mainly people are taking their own lives due to the point of not having any social interactions with each other, um, school closures, not being able to have that connection with their friends. It was taken all, it was taken away. There, there is a beautiful side to the reservation. There is no hardship. You know, you can look at this place as, as, as beautiful just as much as you look at it as much as you hate it.